Hello, hello, and hi. How are you doing in honor of Mother Wendy? Today we'll be recapping Summer House Martha's Vineyard Season 2, Episode 8, Gossip Girls. Well, the episode opens up and we have Bria still having a fit on site. So nosy rosy Natalie, oh she just she just her ears just perked up on her head like a German ship. By the way, I can't stand pointy toe flat shoes like the one Brit have on. In confession, Brit says that her feelings should be put on a pedestal. A pedestal. Oh, she couldn't say pedestal. But she's thinking that he, she is being disrespected by the German. So we have sober summer, isn't it grand? And we get to meet her mother. And Jasmine is also in the room and she's talking about how she wants to heal her friendships. She is feeling guilty about not being there for her grandmother though. And in the meantime, Amir is checking on Bria and her big feet in those ugly flecked black and white shoes. And she proves my point about them being ugly and stupid. She stepped on his foot and almost breaks his toe. But he's dramatic anyway because, you know, he's Drake Jr. So while Amir is giving Bria her prep talk, um, Simon is downstairs looking for sugar. Now, mind you, he has apologized to some of the guys in the group. Um, and then Amir tells Bria that, you know, he and Natalie argue as well. They argue because they miss each other. If you are not for anybody, you are for that girl stand the streets. Child, I can't make this stuff up. Where she come from? She's supposed to be one of those upper echelons, don't she? One of those Jack and Jill type kids. Now, mind you, Amir is saying he has he's having a, a man-to-man -man with the woman. So he admits that he's drunk. And by the way, I don't care how drunk you are. Don't call me no man. We don't have a problem. But anyway, he's trying to fix things between you, Bria, and Simon. Simon says he's trying to be there for Bria and support her. And she says, oh, great, you're not. Child, that man is just being a, a typical cocock, typical. And she got me talking like her. He's just being a typical Caucasian. Likes to have fun, try to be the life of the party, but really goofy and corny. <laughs> when the walk away doesn't work as planned, the door is locked. Bria looks like an idiot. The party is winding down, and so are the gang. And Nick is upstairs with or downstairs. Yes, I think Shanice gave up her bed so he could sleep with old girl, Tasha. But he's downstairs checking on Shanice because Shanice is... Wasted. Why girl wasted? I guess because she's mixed. She can be either one. <laughs> so Brad is acting cuckoo for Coco Plus and she calls her mother. Her mother is trying to be the voice of reason. But why be the voice of reason? You raised that chick to be like that. Old sourpuss ass chick. Now Brad expresses that, you know, this is supposed to be an upscale event. Because of um, them trying to um, celebrate the life of Mr. Bill, Nick's friend. Upscale. When they do pizza boxes and upscale, how those two things go together? By the way, the house is a mess. These people are giving nasty. So the gang decides they want to wake up this morning and they're all discussing the night before and uh, Noel is eating her some honey nut Cheerios and telling Shanice that Mr. Amir doesn't know how to hold his lip. I think that applies to a great deal of y'all. I'm just saying. And I am so freaking glad that Preston and Donna are holding to the stereotype that gay men love to clean up and like clean things because they are indeed the two people that's downstairs cleaning up. Because if they weren't cleaning up, clearly none of the rest of them would be. 
sorry asses. So as Preston and Donald continue to clean up, they realize that the only person who can really out drink everybody in the house is actually just Preston. So now Natalie wants to be a part of the group. So she goes downstairs with the rest of the girls to get in the mix on the hamper because she knows she's about to get her some good guys, right? So Bria complains about Simon once again, and she says that, you know, he should have known better than coming downstairs in this stupid flamingo outfit. Now, baby, you don't have to let this go because you're really about to get on my dog on there. He did it. It's done. He has apologized. Roll on. Roll on. If you want to stay with him, stay with him. Well, she says that he wants to stay longer, so that's why he's acting a fucking fool. So Natalie is talking about how Amir is um, testing his limits. Once again, she calls him a boy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You see how that dynamic works in that relationship. Now look at old Missy Natalie. Stirring the pot as she does, right? She tells the girls about Nick. Um, what did he do for you, um, Shanice? Oh, we well, yeah, he brought me a lucky ginger ale. And he says, well, Tasha was in the bed. And he was down there dancing around trying to get into something. See, see, there you go right there. Those are leading statements. Woo, child. That Bria, she letting it all out to the girl that don't belong on the cast. And she just taking it all in, eating it up like day old french fries. Mm, mm, day old french fries. Mm -hmm. Just taking in all the tea. Mm, 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 sipping. I got it, girl. I'm, I'm going to tell everything I know. You just watch. Because Bria said, I don't think Nick's a hoe. But at the same time, I think he's, you know, and they say it again, handsy. And then Noel steps her foot into the pot and says, you can tell he wants to be alone, wild even. You no, know, in a way, you know, girls, 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 I can't disagree with that. Noel says that, you know, no man of hers is going to be taking pictures with your hand around her neck and then drape the hand to the breast. So, Bria says he doesn't act like a single man, and if somebody was, I mean, a, a guy in a relationship, and if somebody was down to do it with him, he would absolutely put something out in the house. But, again, there's Natalie staring the pot, trying to get all the drama started. Well, maybe we should, like, uh, talk to her. So, there's Natalie. They're back upstairs, and she's finally with Amir. She just couldn't wait to go and tell him what he, and, uh, what she and the girls had talked about. And, you know, they were talking about Nick and Tasha. The girls, meaning her, wants Tasha to know how he behaves when she's not around. Yeah, you mean yourself. None of them agreed to tell this information, by the way. So, Amir says he was trying to make things preventative, right? Because he tells Nick, you know, the actions that you have taken can be perceived or interpreted. <laughs> and then, uh, Preston says, interpreted as something else. You know, something maybe a little more... I wouldn't say serious, but, you know, crushy, maybe flirty, you know. It may be some actions that you shouldn't take while you're in a relationship. Jasmine calls silence. They love each other. And um, she misses him, and he's on the road, but he's just tired. And then there's Natalie again. She's like a little damn flea, ain't she? Or down here in the south right now. A damn cicada. When I tell you I can't stand them big ass bitches. 
So they're about to go bike riding, and who stays out? Nick and Tasha. Yeah. You are kind of exhibiting F-boy behavior there, Nick. I mean, and I get it, right? You are on a trip, and then there's so many single women in the house. But these ladies are like, now at this point, she would be like little baby sisters, hands off, that type of thing. And especially now that they know you're in a relationship. I'm just saying. And so they're talking about Simon and Bri, and they're hoping that everything goes well for them. But they still talking about the flamingo outfit and how Simon ripped one as soon as he took the flamingo off, the flamingo costume off. Yeah, kind of, bro. They said that shit was no salt. Yeah, when you fart and you got doo-doo smell on the fart, then you probably need to go take a dump. I'm just saying. Shout out to Phil. So they realize, the rest of the group realizes that um, Tasia and Nick are not riding bikes but they because they come out in their Sunday's best. And Shanice, Shanice of all people calls them weird. Shanice? Girl, you should have held that bullet in this chamber, dear. So, Bria and Simon finally talk. And Bria's like, why do you choose to act a fool when I'm around you and your friend? Me and my friends. Excuse me. <laughs> Rewind. And when I'm around your friends, I'm on my best behavior. And your friends don't even like me because I'm color. I'm singing and I'm happy and I'm color. Give me a high five. So, now she realizes it. That's why we need to stop taking history out of the history books. There is no more of a racist country in the world than Germany. Duh. Girl. Does Hitler ring a bell? So, of course, Bria feels unprotected and I can feel her in their situation. And that's why... You know, it's a very complicated situation, even when you date outside of your race here, because you all are in your little love bubble and, you know, not even thinking about the rest of the world, but the rest of the world is thinking about you. And what they're doing is throwing digs and things like this at her. And so one of them says to her, well, I did not even know that um, my, my cousin dated the indigenous woman indigenous why should that be an insult do y'all know what indigenous means indigenous should be something that should be celebrated because that means the first on the land okay so stop being offended by what you are boo Mm -hmm. call me indigenous i love it i want to say bitch you wish you was indigenous damn colonizer (laughs) how about that Child back. I, ooh, baby. I would have told her so quick. And she would have been like, hmm, wow. Maybe my insult was such an insult after all. See, you have to reverse, reverse, reverse that shit. So at the bike riding event, what do we have here? We have the wasted Drake Jr. vomiting behind a car. Are we surprised? No, because he's what? White boy wasted. Now, all of them were saying that biking on the vineyard is one of their favorite things to do, and this is Noelle's first time doing it, but it shouldn't be your first time riding a bike. Why do they all look like my six- and seven-year-old riding their bikes? Ooh, there's tension amongst the red and white crew. And by the red and white crew, I mean Nick and Tasia. He was like, you know, he hits a bump, and... Then he wastes coffee on him when he hits that bump. She seems slightly perturbed. And then the coup de gras happens, right? They talk about the cell phones not working. And then she says, he says, why don't we invent cell phones that could work on the vendor? Arrington cell phones. And she says, I don't know what you talking about because my last name Burrow. I know that's right. Tell him what your real last name is, sus, because he don't want to be married to you because he's that type to say, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah, I'm looking. Mm, Tasia's a, 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 a good solid eight, and she has everything that I'm looking for, smart, beautiful, talented. But, hey, 
it's always a 10 out there. That's a goo- a goofy doofus. But as long as she's a 10 and I have her on my cap of arm, then I'm good. And here he is in confession. I'm not going to go into this long soliloquy. Just know that it was soliloquy, him being in a relationship, describing why he doesn't want to get married, basically. He says, actually, the end goal for him is wearing bells after he gets done with the soliloquy, and they go back to them in the car. And he's asking her, like, hmm, do you want your last name to stay Burbs? And she's like, maybe, girl, the biggest misconception is the pride of taking a, la- um, a man's last name. Mm-mm, honey. It's okay to hyphenate. Shout out to Jada Pinky Smith. And Jasmine, of all people, is there helping Goofy Jordan ride her bike. What did I just tell y'all about those bikes? They ride worse than my six and seven year old. So there it is, right? Joy. Um, with Silas being gone, I'm getting a little bit more of the uh, Jasmine that I used to know. Girl, what? Whew. If you get you somebody, you'll change too. And Preston gives the history of ginger ale with black folks, right? Yep, that's true. Get sick, ginger ale. Want a cracker? Ginger ale goes with crackers when you're nauseated. Now, mind you, the history is not that bad because ginger ale includes ginger. And ginger has many, many, many healing properties. So the nausea is one of them. All I did when I was pregnant, I ha- I didn't have any morning sickness, you know, for most of my pregnancy. But the couple of times that I did have it, all I did was ate a piece of ginger candy. It works min- miracles. Preston says you have to say ah at the end because if you don't do that, it's not going to work. Oh, yeah, maybe, maybe not. So Natalie is ready to get into the mess. She is putting the phone sign up to Tasia. We need to talk. You know, mouthing it to her. Baby, no. Girl, this girl literally has come into the house and sown the most discord, more discord than summer. And that's a lot. Well, she's running a close second to Bria. I almost lied and said Bria too, but no, I can't. So Bria comes over and she's petting um, Tasia like she's a little chihuahua or Milo. Shout out, I should have said Milo. Cause shout out to Milo because he is in the house. And um, she was like, I want you to be in the loop. Like she's so concerned. Bitch, you ain't concerned. Mind you, you don't really like black folks like that, like that. Girl, you know I'm concerned about you, my little pretty pet. I just want to keep you in the loop before anything comes to your attention. And Tara and Tasia does what? Brushes her ass right on off like the flea that she is. I'm about to go. I'm tired anyway. I'm done. I know that's right. Bye, flea girl. So she goes down and tells her Drake Jr., that uh, Tasia doesn't want to talk. And Nick says, I'll handle it, whatever it is. So Drake Jr. is a white boy wasted. He makes a ketchup bottle into a pillow. Now, mind you, Nick and Tasia, they have tension because whatever it is that Miss and Natalie wants to talk about, it's probably about him. He figures that part out. Oh, snap. A text thread goes on. Tasia didn't talk at all. What is going on? Natalie, apparently, you're touchy. What? Really? This is a text conversation between um, Tasia and, I'm sorry, between Miss and Natalie and Nick. Who's saying that about me? Bria, Noel, and Shanice. Ooh, she just stepped in the dish. So Drake Jr. is doing what Drake Jr.'s do. Tell it, tell it, tell it. You know, because, you know, we want to be involved in the mess, but not involved in the black folks' fun. 
No, that's not what we want to do. We want to stir the pot and destroy relationships. So Drake Jr. gives Nellie all the praise. She's kind. She's smart. She's important. And all she's trying to do is help the situation. I know my girl is not really messy and trying to keep up all the shit in the house when she really is not a character on the show. So they play roll call and I love roll call, but they do it like Gen Z's. My name is Jordy. Yeah, I'm super cool. Yeah. But that's all I got. What? See, I'm about to do it for you. My name is Diva D. Yeah, I'm super fly. Yeah, and when I go outside, all the guys want to give it a try. You know, you come up with some nice little rhyme like that. See, that's how you do it. And then, even if it doesn't rhyme or sound really good, you completed the roll call. You don't just start with the yeah, and then, no, that's all I got. Child back. Jordan discovers a bug. Summer tells her it's just protein. So Noel asks the elf boy of the house, Alex, does he wish he had brought someone there for a couple's night? And he goes into the, well, you know, the swag, delicious, the swag, delicious. You know, you know, I, you know, I can't, you know, it really doesn't, you know, mean a thing to me because, you know, I'm just laid back, you know, cool, chilling, the fly type of guy, you know. I don't really get, oh, get into all of that, you know? So Shanice, of all people, says if she brings a gal around, she's serious. And she's going to be serious as hell. Oh, really now? Hmm. I see. And while Alex is talking his fuckboy talk, what is Summer doing? Slurping on that drink as loud as she can get it. So Jasmine is kind of disappointed that she didn't get to know Nick and Tasha as a couple because you know mind you we didn't even know they were together last year back in this back over with Natalie and um Drake Jr. Oh my god I, I don't want to seem like I'm just like a problematic girl and I don't want her to be mad at me and then he says no babe no you did nothing wrong that's your girl hmm child Remember, she's not a cast member. So, back at the table, Alex asked Bria, where was she and Simon? And she's like, hey, I'm not in the mood to talk. Because he was like, I need you to break it down to me. I mean, what was going on with you guys? So, they collect all the food and they get ready to go back to the house. Now, baby, this is where things get interesting. Not interesting, interesting. So the text and conversation continues, and now Natalie is guilt ridden, right? She's kind of feeling the burn of Nick. So I don't want, I just don't want nobody to be mad at me. Well, that's kind of what happens when you stir the pot. Somebody's going to be mad at you. I'm just saying. So Noel comes up with the question on how do you know when you really made it? She just can't leave that Alex alone, can you? Can she? He's trying to drive, and she asked the question, how do you know when you really made it? For me, it's going to be when I get my 40 acre and a Girl, we've been waiting for that 40 acre and a mule ever since 1865. I don't think it's going to happen. So, um, back at the house, Preston is, and Nick are talking, and Nick tells Preston, apparently I've been handsy. I thought we had hashed this shit out. Now Nick is frustrated. What is it about these women? Do they not want to see me happy with my girlfriend? Eh, I wouldn't say that. I mean, you don't seem happy with your girlfriend. I'm just saying. Now Preston is really confused. Why is Natalie in this? Hey, the United States is wanting the same thing. So instead of giving Natalie the business, no, Nick doesn't give Natalie the business. He's ready to give the business to the black girls. Because that's what we do, right? That's how you cause this course between the house slave and the field slave, right? Yeah, that's what, you know, Master used to do, right? He calls this course, and then who's fighting? House slave and field slave. 
Because Nick should be mad at not one, not two, but three, but four people. Because it was four people on the damn hammock, Natalie and Clue. So Nick is telling Simon, who has very little skills in English, that he needs to address something with his girlfriend. Now, had that been a black man, I don't know how that wouldn't work out, but, you know, I'm just saying. So, what is Nick saying to Noelia here? I know you want to be included, but that shit's fucked up. Included in what? Being one of your victims of the handsomeness? I mean, what is she trying to do here? I mean, included in what way? Included in hanging out with the rest of the girls or... You know, that's, that's, you left room for interpretation in there, Nick. Because don't ever, ever get it twisted. Noelle can hang with any of them in the bad bitch department. I'm just saying. Noelle defends herself. It wasn't that serious to me. It wasn't a situation where I said that, you know, you made me feel uncomfortable. Hi, Giselle. Yes, sir, Roy. So now, Noelle realized she shouldn't have included Natalie. If you didn't think about that when she came creeping out there and didn't want to hang with you all at the parties, but all of a sudden now it's time to have a girl talk and chill and do all these things. Ah, baby, I would have said, excuse me, excuse me, um, maybe you should go back in the house with Drake Jr. We're going to hang out with each other. But well, that's true. You know, she was acting like Sherlock Homegirl and whatnot. And then uh, Noelle says, you know, uh, that's not your place, sis. And it's not. So Noelle hops up and she goes and gets Shanice. And what is Shanice doing? She taking shit. And then, baby, you better not come and interrupt me when I'm on the porcelain throne. Ew! I tell my kids, don't you come in there when I'm taking my dump. I want my dump in privacy. I'm reading a book or I'm either... Looking at my phone. That's my me time. And don't forget to use poopery. And everybody's in the bathroom, apparently, because Brill's also in the bathroom. But now, uh, Noel is rounding up the troops. So it's a catch 22 with Shanice, right? Because, mind you, Shanice says, You know, I wouldn't say you're handsy with me, but you are a looker. Girl, naked Shanice. You're, you're saying that this man, and he's supposed to be straight, shouldn't be looking with you, with your chest all out, and your tight is hanging out, and you flopping your little cheeks all across the, the little three quarters worth of booty you have, all around the house. He said he shouldn't look. I'm, I'm sorry. I mean, that's what straight men do. If you throw your ass in a circle, they go look. Throw that ass in a circle. Throw that ass in a circle. <laughs> They're gonna look, trust me. So if you don't want him looking, then you shouldn't throw that ass in a circle. And then on top of that, girl, weren't you the one at the freak Nick party once he put on the tattoo that was very attractive to him and knew he had a girlfriend? Now all of a sudden, it's a problem. Oh, you little hypocrite, you. Wondering eyes, and then they show her with flashbacks with her toddies all in his face. Girl, bye. So Shanice and Confession says, well, maybe you should just be single, hun. And so Nick asks her back at the table. So eyes and hands now. What is it? Am I touchy, feely, feely, touchy, bring it back? Or am I uh, icy? So Nick is like, what's the motivation? I mean, this is like crying wolf. If there's no there to be, to be there, then what's the problem? This is like crying wolf. So Noel is saying... This shit shouldn't have been brought to you in the first place because it wasn't that serious. And there's Natalie. You should see the look on her dumb face. So, everybody is confronting Nick about his hands. So, Amir is like, well, you know, we're not attacking you, but, you know, we need you to understand that these things may be perceived as inappropriate. And that's when um, he says, you know, he has the strange look on his face. Like, what, what, you know, what can I do about this? 
you know, Brill's not in the room yet. You know it's about to be a shit storm when she gets in there. And then, again, Natalie is all innocent white girl. I meant no harm. I mean, and that's my girl. Yo, girl, just because y'all went out on a couple of double dates, that's your girl. Child back. And now Jordan jumps in. She's like, well, we have had those conversations about you, you know, being touchy, feel it, bring you back. And, and, you know, we pretty much squashed our issue. So Alex comes to the fence of his frat brother. He's like, uh-uh, uh uh-uh, uh you're not going to talk about the red and white. Oh, sorry, crimson and cream. No, sir. I'm going to have his back. Y'all could have brought this stuff to him. Bingo. That way, the Caucasian girl that stirs up mess, discord, and chaos in the house wouldn't have been even involved in it. Because who would have been involved in it? The three people that said something and Nick. And Bria says, I never said you were handsome with me. And the flashback happened. I believe that if Nick was in that state and somebody in this house was down the bug him, he would do it. So, girl, you did say it indirectly in a roundabout way. I'm just saying. I said you get loose, not handsy. You know, what does loose mean in that context? Bring it to me, Bria. Well, I mean, you know, loose like flirty, not handsy. But you said it was... In those flirty moments when he's loose, he might get get up on it. So it goes, let's go back to the flashbacks of Bria thinking that he is indeed flirty. But she says she wouldn't run back and tell Tasha. So Bria says, you know, everybody has their own experiences with you when you're drunk. And Nick says, hold up, hold up, B. B rocker. Let me just say this. I've already talked to Shanice. Hold up on your end. Don't bring nobody else in. Well, I'm just going to go because you're not going to talk to me crazy. You look like I talk to you how I want to talk to you. Because what you did was effed up. Let it out. Let it out. Let it out. And baby, when I tell you that that end of the show with Bria saying let it out, I have never seen an eight, nine episode show. That had more to be continues. No. I haven't. Usually. In the mix of that. It's about 22 episodes. And you know back in the day. In my day. To be continued only happened on Dallas and Dynasty. Darling. And Three's Company. Not on reality TV. What do we need a show to be continued for? I'm just saying. But anyway. The next continuation will be the finale. Oh, I'm going to miss these guys. I love this show. I do. Okay, come on in. Come on in. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. That's going to end this episode. I'm going to so miss them. But they are getting a reunion. I can't wait. But anyway, that's going to close. And as I do... When I close a wonderful episode, I chop them up. Don't say.